the new manager of the Washington Senators, the great man of baseball, Mr. Ted Williams. I'm reminded, particularly this week, of a quotation from Shakespeare's Richard III, and this may sound strange from me, a lawyer, but when it was said, first, let's kill all the lawyers. And I couldn't participate in the conferences this week without being reminded of that passage, recognizing that my good friend, and now the manager of our team, was fishing in the Florida waters. I know that I should introduce those that participated, but they're not all here. As a matter of fact, by way of a confession, I might tell you that they haven't even presented us with the documents that we're supposed to sign. But the lawyers that did participate, obviously, were Mr. Stanley Bregman of Washington, Mr. Bill Bush, Mr. Roger Marcus, Mr. Paul Brophy, who is Ted's old friend and accountant, Mr. Edwin Kahn, and we were indeed helped this morning by Mr. Sabin Streeter of Blythe and Company. All of these men, including those of us that were lawyers, did everything we could to bring this historic occasion to Washington as early as we could. This is Ted's night. And it is Washington's night, and it is the Senator's night, and it hopefully, and I know it is America's night, Ted, it's my pleasure to present you to this group here in the home of the pennant winner this year of the American League, Mr. Ted Williams. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, as you can see, I haven't got any notes. I really didn't expect anything quite this elaborate to happen. I'm sure that if I had them, I wouldn't be able to uh, present them to you in the elegant manner that Mr. Short has. I can only tell you from the heart that I'm happy about this. Certainly when a fellow plays baseball professionally for 25 years that he never ever loses his little, his great likeness for the game that's meant so much to him. I know I have a great opportunity here with a great new owner in baseball. And I know I can only tell you this, that I'm going to do everything I can to make this opportunity uh, pay off for everybody. Baseball, Bob Short, American League, the players, every, every way that I can to uh, make this uh, worthwhile. I was fishing last week, as he said, and uh, I know that he's had a pretty tough week. But despite the fact that I have been in Florida, well, I've had a pretty tough week too. And uh, I can only say in closing that I know you do want to ask some questions. I can only say that I, I, I hope uh, Bob Short making it possible for me to come back into baseball really full-fledged uh, is not a mistake, and I'm going to try in every way I can to make sure that it isn't. Now the principals will be moving to the table, which is just to the right of the podium, and simulating the signing. On the right is Mr. Bob Short, on the left is Ted Williams, and this is being posed for the many cameramen who are around, and fully uh, ten uh, cameras are trained upon this table, and the document which has been laid in front of Mr. Short and Mr. Williams, and you can hear a great deal of laughter in the background as the two go through the motions here of making the signing, working their signatures onto this historic piece of paper which brings Ted Williams 
to the area. It's a rather incredible situation that this should be so well covered, but it is because Ted Williams' magic name still prevails. I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but the man has a striking similarity to John Wayne in the way he talks, the, the inflection in his voice and, voice and the, just the way he appears and handles himself. He also resembles him. He's a tall man. He's picked up some few pounds since he was the splendid splinter in baseball some eight to ten years ago when he last played and was the scourge of the American League. But he still seems in remarkable for him. He's a man of 50 years of age, and he's enjoyed so many of these years in pitching down in Florida, and the things that have tempted him uh, to come back to baseball has been this opportunity once again to work in the game, which he has just described as the great game that means so much that he has loved so very much. The cameras are continually trained upon Mr. Williams, and he and Mr. Short are taking their time and are signing again and again and again for the many photographers who are here assembled. Williams' hands and his wrists are something to see. This is the, the hand and wrist of a man who was able to hit 406 in, uh, at one point in his career when he was playing for the Boston Red Sox some almost uh, 28 years ago when he batted for that historic mark the last time that the American League mark, or as a matter of fact, the last time the national the uh, baseball uh, marks were showing a batter hitting over 400. He's still got the, the agility in his wrists, and of course we there is the hope that he will be able to transfer this fantastic hitting knowledge to the Washington Senators this year. Bert Hawkins has just announced that in just a few moments these two gentlemen will be able to field the questions which await. There are fully, uh, fully 100 to 150 people now in this room, the huge room here in the Washington Hilton where this historic signing is taking place. There was a red carpet laid out for Ted Williams, and it uh, led from the back room to the front right up to the podium, which is, is being bathed in a lot of the light for the television and the uh, film cameras who are here. Uh, that was uh, put out of existence because the, just the overflow of people who have come to cover this kind of an event that made it impossible to carry through with that kind of a, a decor. And still, Mr. Williams and Mr. Short are still signing the documents. Williams looks in tremendous shape, and of course he was itching to go from the moment that he was mentally and morally committed to take over this ball club. As you may have heard earlier, Bob Short mentioned that there were several of the attorneys who were here. Not everyone was here, but most of the attorneys were here who were dealing in the negotiations between the principals in this, including the senators and Mr. Williams himself. I think we're coming to the end of what has been the opening moments of Mr. Williams' uh, introduction to the Washington Press Corps. He's looked out into the, uh, the amount of lighting here, and I, he's recognized some faces which uh, he has known before when he played here with the Boston Red Sox for so many years and so successfully in the American League. And when he has concluded this part of the presentation, he will then come to the many microphones which are on the podium and will be then answering the questions which are about to be asked of him. Williams, of course, is in the Hall of Fame. He and Casey Stengel were in the same year. Williams was a gentleman who never was dedicated to anything less than personal excellence. There were some who thought that perhaps uh, he was a little bit lethargic on the field, but you could never prove it by him. He covered his position beautifully, defensively and offensively. Of course, he was the scourge of the American League for so many years. He looks entirely relaxed now. He, as we mentioned before, is perhaps uh, 15 uh, to 20 pounds over what he would like to be, but uh, he is in a, this, the kind of a situation where in a few weeks he will work off that pound each, and he will have himself in the same shape that his ball players uh, he hopes to have. Bob Short and Ted Williams are now standing side by side for the press with their hands in the air, the right hand of Short, the right hand of Williams, and that's a post picture which you'll be seeing tomorrow because uh, this is the indication that it is a brand new ball game for 1968. And as a matter of fact, this is what you're seeing uh, right now on the big uh, the little blackboard, which is uh, just between Williams and Short, it's a whole brand new ball game for 1968. Their press kit. It's a whole new ball game in '69, I should say. And next '69 is the year. It's a whole new game for them. And this is going to be the theme of the uh, Washington Senators. And Williams, looking tanned, is now ready to move back up to the top and explain why this new ball game will be what it is. And once again, we go to the podium. Bob Short and Ted Williams. Either Mr. Williams or myself, I'm certain that uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. How would you characterize yourself? Describe yourself. Well, as a uh, formerly retired baseball player who's uh, had a great opportunity to get back into the pitch of things, and I'm uh, really eagerly awaiting it. Yes, what's the length of contract? 
How long is the contract? <laughs> well, uh, it, <laughs> it's um, for five years. Five. And a uh, few other details. <laughs> you will have a clock in it, is that correct? You will have a... Can you tell us how much? No, I don't think that Mr. Short would want to reveal that, nor would I. At this will time... It, will it be in the baseball team or... Yeah, I'm not interested in those trucking outfits, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Does Ted have any title other than manager of all clubs? He can have any title he wants. <laughs> or is he a vice president? He will be a vice president, yes. Mr. Williams, what will be your biggest change from your active playing days to managing? What do you feel will be the biggest change? Well, I think that I've, uh, uh, I hope I've matured a little more, and I uh, uh, hope that my thinking's a little better, and um, I think I know baseball. Uh, there's certain things that I know that I am uh, going to have to learn, certain things that I'm going to have to learn as far as managing is concerned, and um, uh, other things about baseball It's in the management, the management uh feel of it, but uh, I feel that uh, uh, I'm, I'm preparing myself mentally for this type of thing, and um, uh, it's a real challenge, and uh, certainly uh, uh, I know that uh, the owner uh, uh, realizes my shortcomings now, and I uh, uh, I certainly expect to be better as time goes on, and I think he'll expect me to be better, too. Ted, <clears throat> how about your assistant coaches? Well, to be honest with you, I, uh, we haven't even gone <coughs> into that too uh, deeply. Uh, I, uh, I know that uh, Nellie Fox is uh, certainly uh, going to be indispensable. He knows the Paul Club. I've played with him. I know he was a big pain to me playing second base. I've always admired him as a player, and uh, I know that he's uh, uh, got a lot of talent in this direction. I mean, uh, just the fact he was a little peppery infielder. He knows all about infield play. He knows all about the personnel in this ball club, and uh, he's going to be a great help to me. Well, I wouldn't say we're going to lose it now. I'll have to see what's going on. I mean, i got to be honest and tell you that I haven't seen very many of these fellows play. I've seen Howard play. I've seen Epstein play. Uh, in fact, the only time I've seen them play is on television. Uh, I, uh, I've talked to several people about this ball club, and, and I have to admit that uh, there's a lot more optimism uh, from baseball people about uh, some of the potential on this team than uh, a lot of the writers would uh, uh, care to indicate to you. <clears throat> Baseball people you talk to about the summer? Well, I talked to Raleigh Hensley, Hemsley. I talked to George Susie. I've talked to Joe Cronin. I've talked to uh, uh, a couple other people about him. Did you uh, lay down your terms to Mr. Short, or did Mr. Short make an offer to you? No, I think it was a it was a uh, two way street there. I think that we both had ideas, and I think that. Uh, uh, I think that's the way it was handled. Is there any manager that you would like to model yourself upon? Well, I played for some great managers, and I have always said that the greatest manager I felt that I played for, uh, to me, he had more pluses. As, as I looked at him, I said, well, if I ever became a manager, I wish I could do it like this fellow. And Joe McCarthy was, uh, to me, the fellow that I uh, uh, felt uh, had more going for him as a manager. I thought that he, he did one great thing, and that was that he uh, instilled a business-like attitude uh, on a ball club more than any other manager I played for, and I played for some good ones. Ted, will you uh, appoint a pitching coach, or will you handle that yourself? Huh? Will you, handle a, will you handle the pitching coaching chores yourself, or will you appoint a pitching coach? Well, I've said this uh, before, and I've felt this for a long time. Uh, as a hitter, as a successful hitter, 
I think any successful hitter has to know a lot about pitching. You can believe me on that. And if I, if I was a successful hitter and I did know a lot about pitching, then I should be able to help some of the pitchers. Baseball has taken some raps lately, sometimes to his friends. Uh, do you think any of that's justified or suggest any changes in the game? Well, I'm willing to admit that there's other great sports, and I think that uh, that certainly they have come up to the level of baseball and and, uh, and maybe have passed it in, in some instances. But there's no question in my mind that baseball is the greatest game. And like everything else, you have highs and lows, and I think that baseball is right at the right at the beginning of a tremendous upsurge. Mr. Short, as an owner, what would you suggest to uh, help the, uh, the game of baseball reach the pinnacle again? Well, I don't think that it's uh, right that uh, in some six or eight weeks that I should be advising other owners and managers and players about what we should do to make the game better. I think it's pretty good. And my purchase price indicates that. And uh, I know that uh, Ted's re-entry into the game indicates that he thinks the game is going even further than it is. And I might say that for us to be successful here, it's going to have to go further than it did last year. <laughs> well, I have to be in all honesty. If I were a player, I would. I th I'm pretty sure I'd be sticking with the players. But I think this thing is is something too important for the players, too important for the owners, and I'm pretty darn sure that things are going to happen pretty short to bring this thing to a close to the uh, to the satisfaction of everybody. Ted, how are you going to go about install, in, in, instilling your own fierce desire, which is always evident, in a, in a team that seems very apathetic in recent years? Well, I can only go back to my younger days playing ball. And I wish that I could have been impressed somewhere or another, and no doubt I have had, had, had this uh, thrown my way, is to realize the importance of baseball, importance of baseball to a young fellow, uh, to realize that this is his life work, to realize that the importance of it, that uh, the better he is, the more he's going to make out of it. And I think that this, uh, the, as quick as you can get that point over to anybody, young, any young athlete, why the better his chances of, uh, of getting the fullest out of his abilities are. Ted, uh, will manager Ted Williams be able to tolerate a player like Ted Williams as far as temperament? If he can hit like Ted Williams, he's got a good chance. <laughs> next year, the pinch hitters may be able to come up. This may sound silly. Do you ever envision yourself as a going to pinch hit again, uh, to pinch hit, rather? No, because I know how hard it was to pinch hit when I was 42, and I'm 51 now, so <laughs> there's no chance. You say 51, everybody's going to say 50. Well, I'm going on 51. <laughs> Have you gone over the roster much? Have you studied the players? Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I haven't, except to the extent that I've talked about these different players uh, to the people that I know have uh, followed the uh, game even more closely than I have in the last uh, two or three years, certainly the Washington Senators. And uh, uh, I've got a lot of information, and, uh, but I really can't tell you that I know the roster very well. Was this an agonizing week for you? Certainly you was. Out? Certainly was. I didn't know whether I was or wasn't. Uh, how agonizing but is I wanted it? to. Huh? How agonizing is it to you to find that the American League's leading hitter hit 301 last year? Well, I can only say there must be reasons for it. I don't know exactly what they are. Um, uh, I've always said that hitting was the hardest single thing to do in sports. I still think it is. Um, uh, in order to become a, a good hitter, why uh, uh, it takes probably more opportunity to do that very thing than any other phase of any sport. Uh, and um, uh, 
uh, it's very possible that uh, the other sports getting a lot of the good athletes and uh, uh, the other uh, sports uh, being as attractive in some instances more that uh, this is possibly the reason that some of the better athletes are, are not continuing on as hitters. You don't uh, talk to the theory then that it's the pitchers that are getting better. Well, uh, what I've seen, I haven't thought that, and uh, not the 100% by a long ways. And uh, I, think that, I think that there's other factors, though, that, uh, uh, that have contributed. For example, I think some of the ballparks might be just a little bit unfair and... Uh, Certainly, uh, I can't conceive, and it's happened, of ballparks uh, coming into baseball with uh, important franchises that uh, have lousy backgrounds and poor lights. Not poor lights anymore, but they used to have poor lights, but certainly bad backgrounds. And to be in an important series like uh, the World Series or All-Star Games, where the good hitters um, have to hit against pitchers that uh, uh, are pitching out of white shirts, and that still happens. And I think that's absolutely one of the great evils. Uh, that's uh, happened in baseball. Yeah. Uh, what is going to be your policy towards the press? Towards the press. Well, I'm going to try my very best to get along with them, I'll tell you that. And I think that i got to be honest and say that my feeling towards the press has changed a little bit over the years. And i also got to say this in front of all you gentlemen, that regardless of what you've heard and regardless of what you think, I'm not a hard guy to get along with, and regardless of what you've heard and what you think, the minority, the minority was the ones that, very, very small minority was the only ones I ever had any problems with. <clears throat> I'd like to pose a hypothetical question. Since the general manager's job has been phased out, let's assume that uh, during the course of the season that there's a trade to be made at uh, who will do the consulting as to whether the trade should be made or should not be made? Well, I think that uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say that our team hasn't been completely formed uh, from from the top to the bottom, and I think that these are things that's going to happen that'll happen that'll pretty near answer your your question, Mark. Instead of the part owner, will you go into owners' meetings and ask them that, or tell them that they should be playing interleague play? Well, I can tell you, as such a minority stockholder, I ain't going to have too much to say. <laughs> do you advocate interleague play? I think it would be a great thing for baseball. I sure do. I think people in Washington love to see some of the National League players they haven't seen and vice versa. And I know that you said that you would like to move the fence in the Washington ballpark. Uh, if so, how far? Well, I, I, I said that uh, uh, just in conversation, and uh, I think it's something that has to be looked into a little bit. I think, for example, if the Washington Ball Club hit 30 home runs at home and hit 60 on the road, then you have a little something to talk about there. So, I mean, that's something that you're going to have to look into. I've seen it once. Yes, I did. Yeah. Is your salary as manager going to be in the same neighborhood as your salary as a player? Well, I think that would have to be answered by Mr. Short. I, well, I don't know what his salary <laughs> was as a player. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I'd like to pay it to him as a player any time that he'd like to play. Yes, well, I think the key, of course, is improvement, knowing your personnel and knowing what to do from here on out. Uh, as far as how many games we're going to win and uh, that type of thing, I think they won, what, 60-some-odd uh, uh, games. And uh, uh, the main thing is we've got to improve. I think we will. Is this the only... Uh, manager's job that you would have considered? Well, uh, there was a lot of factors that uh, that uh, were involved here, and certainly one of them is the fellow to my right, and uh, uh, I think that uh, a lot of things uh, uh, made it all come into focus for me because uh, uh, I uh, I've been out of out of it quite a little while, but uh, I got to say that he got me all stirred up, and then uh, uh, not right away, but the second uh, second meeting we had. 
And uh, then after that, why things uh, pretty much uh, come to conclusion uh, the way I hope we both wanted it. Sure. Any prospects for a safer DC stadium this year? Well, I don't know how unsafe it was last year, but uh, your ticket will entitle you to complete safety this year, and uh, that will be uh, without any question in terms of our administration. What are your immediate plans? When do you head back to Florida? Well, I don't plan on staying up here too long. I've only got one other shirt and two other pairs of underwear, so I've got to go back. <laughs>